I joined Akash in 9th standard. Mm -hmm. So I joined early, I gave Anthe in 8th standard. Pretty much a game changing moment for me. Now I'm competing all across India. Talent Hunt exam, right? And of course, we know that 
what you see on screen that is you know top lucky winners will go to nasa but more than that you know that nasa is a step i mean ante that is there is a stepping stone for all of you right where you start your competitive exam journey so do not forget to register because the link is there in the description box and the registration is absolutely free right and of course you know that the exam is going to be in november we'll be doing some questions based on that we've already started right so please please make sure that you do not forget to register yes all right let's go with high josh right yes my josh is very very high very quickly how's the josh in the channel today how's the josh in our classroom today yes how excited are we right are we ready to ace the questions from cell structure and function give me a quick excitement level check on the chat very very high yes i know i know it's high super high Give me a quick excitement level check and we're going to get started very quickly. I'm not going to waste too much time. Thank you so much everybody. Thank you so much. Okay, Manju is in ICSE. No problem. No problem. It will still help you these questions. They may not be in your textbook, but it will still help you. Thank you. Let's get started. All right. So I want all of you to answer along with me. Okay. So this is basically for all of you. Now the first question that is there is a series of true or false. All right, so we have four subparts here. Now we have four statements, and we need to indicate if the statements are true or false. So whenever you have questions like this, you know my approach, right? Let's go at it one by one. Okay. So the first statement is unicellular organisms have only one celled body. Is this statement true or false? Yes. Okay, very good. Give me the answers quickly on the chat, everyone. I want this chat to be flooded with answers. Yes, Arif, if you are not able to hear me, please make sure that you increase the volume. Right? Somebody, please tell Arif because he's not able to hear me. True. Very good. Very good. And give me an example of a unicellular organism. Give me an example on the chat. An example of unicellular organisms. Yes. Very good. Amoeba, bacteria. All right. I'm going to write this down. Amoeba, bacteria. All right. I can see paramecium. Very good. Paramecium is here. Yes. Algae, euglena, penicillin. No, no. Penicillin will not be a example. Okay. Yes. Amoeba, euglena, and all are correct, but not penicillin. Yes. Very good. So of course we know that unicellular organisms, as the name suggests, uni means single. That means that they have a single cell or one celled body. And examples are amoeba, bacteria, paramecium, right? We also see that uh, we also have euglena, like all of you are telling me. So in this case, we see that the correct answer is true. This statement is true. Yes? Is fungi unicellular? So fungi is a group of organisms where most of them are multicellular, but here and there some organisms like yeast are unicellular. Okay, Chlamydomonas is also unicellular. All right, that is also a unicellular organism. Spirogyra is a filamentous structure. Okay, it is filamentous in nature. Is it unicellular? We'll not really say because of the many many filaments that are there. All right. Microbes. All microbes are not actually unicellular. Right? We learnt about it in microorganisms. So very simple and easy. Now moving on to the next one. Muscle cells are branched. True or false? Yes. I'll make this easy. Maybe muscle cells that are found in the digestive tract, right? Or let's say that we find in the urinary bladder. False or true? False. Very good. Very good. Because we know that there are some muscles which are spindle shaped, right? So we know that they are spindle shaped. And for those of you who are asking me, ma'am, what is spindle shaped? That means that it is broad in the center, narrow in the edges, right? That is what we mean by spindle shape, which is why they are false because these are not branched, right? They do, we don't find any branching here. But I'll tell you something. This is for you next year, okay? So all of you who will go to 9th standard, no? You will realize that muscles can be further categorized into multiple types, all right? In that, you will learn a different type of concept. But that's for 9th grade. We don't need to worry about it now, okay? All right. Now we'll move on to the next one. The basic unit, living unit of, or, of an organism is an organ. Very quickly, very quickly. This is so easy. 
द बेसिक यूनिट लिविंग यूनिट ऑफ एन ऑर्गेनिज्म इज एन ऑर्गेन very good very good yes wonderful everyone wonderful all right yes the statement is false right because we know that in the case of a basic unit or what we call as the fundamental unit we know that the basic fundamental unit of all living organism is a cell and not an organ right so the correct answer here is option or the statement here is false very good very good so sometimes they may ask you to rewrite the statements right so rewrite the correct statement then you will have to change it the basic living unit of an organism is a cell and not an organ all right now moving on to the next one amoeba has an irregular shape very quickly true or false just give me one minute i'll be back okay very good everybody very good yes this statement here is true again we know that amoeba that is there is a unicellular organism and they have a irregular shape right and we know that this statement here is true so very good everybody very good i can see that a lot of you have got this answer so all you needed to do for this is to stay whether it's true or false and i hope that you've made a note of it Shagun, I am coming live at 8 p.m. for class seven. But apart from that, I've started respiration in organisms also. You can check the videos out in the uh, playlists that are there. Yes? Okay. Yeah, it looks like a croissant, right? Yes, but it's not. Okay. All right. So now let's move on to the next question. I know that in this this question is something that you had asked me even in the one shot session that was there. that is to make a sketch of the human nerve cell and then write down what is the function that it performs right so this is what the question is so now what you need to do is to draw how the nerve cell looks like or how the neuron looks like right and then write down the function all right so now let's draw this okay so whenever you're drawing neuron i know that a lot of you are telling my mom i don't like doing art not my thing i hate drawing drawing my drawing doesn't look you know very nice yes right you please draw this i'm only going to draw it my team has given me a blank slide because they know ashwarya ma'am you will draw no so you i'll give you a blank slide so yes i'm going to show you how to draw it right so i want you to focus on how i'm drawing it okay because most often than not you tend to get confused here yes riddhi i can see your messages i want you to focus on the class okay yes very good prachi very good okay all right so the first thing that you can do is to make the first part of the neuron now there are two ways of it you can draw it like this horizontal or you can draw it vertical also i am kind of used to drawing it horizontal so i'm going to do it that way so first i'm going to make a big you know like a star kind of thing okay now once i make this i'm going to extend this part so from here also i'm going to extend this part and this is going to end in bulbs like this all right now if you ask me ma'am why you are drawing bulbs think about a tree tree needs root also no that's why yes all right then after that you need to draw all these bulb bulb structures here yes okay all right so you have to draw this and from each of these points that you see you know all these points you will have to draw branches just like branches of a tree yes so let's branch out the trees okay we'll draw beautiful branches yes all right now we'll branch it out it's very simple you only need to think about a tree and how you would branch it yes and in the center because it's a cell it needs to have a nucleus and then always label it as neuron or in this case since the question has asked us nerve cell you can write nerve cell here and then write down the function right very easy diagram nothing is there don't worry i'm telling you the more you draw no you will realize oh all these diagrams are very easy yes saurabh is new to class hello saurabh welcome to the class today there will not be a menti quiz we'll be having it later on all right yes then after this you have to write down the function very quickly in the chat tell me what is the function of nerve cell very quickly everybody please label it 
See, in NCRT, labeling is not there for all the students who have CBSE. You might not understand, right? But I'm going to quickly label the parts, okay? You don't need to label it. In CBSE, they'll not ask you to label this, all right? But for some of the students, right, it's important. Or oh, some of you have to label it as well. Okay, then I label it, all right. So in this case, we have dend, right? So these protruding structures that you see, right? This is extra information. So those of you who want this can take it, all right? So these are known as dendrites. Now this part that is there which we colored. So I'm going to use a different color maybe to label because everything is looking very yellow on screen. I use green. So this part right here is what we call as a dendrite. All right. And here if you see this part here. So I'm just going to draw an arrow like this. This right here is what we call as a cell body. Now you can also label the nucleus if you want to. So here if you see, you can label the nucleus as well of the cell. So you have nucleus. Then you see that this long projecting structure here is the axon. And this bulb-like structure that you see is called as the axon terminals. All right. Now, okay, you can't see my axon terminals. I'm just going to label it once again. All right, these are known as axon terminals, okay? Now, for some of you, this is extra, this is not required, okay? Axon is this long structure. So basically, when you talk about nerve impulses, no, it will go whoosh like that. So basically, axon is this long protruding structure which helps in the conduction of the nerve impulses or the information that is there. So that is the role of it. Are we clear? You can take a screenshot. I'll just step aside, all right? How many neurons are there in the brain? Almost millions of neurons are there. What are dendrites? Dendrites are these branch structures that receive the information, okay? So they receive the information, they send it through the cell body, they'll send it through axon and then till the end. Yes, very good. They help in controlling and coordinating of the working of different parts. Okay, it's Sauravi. All right, Sauravi, I'll keep this in mind. Axon is a, like some of you told me, no, it's a long structure basically. It's like a long, what do you say, projection that is there. Yes, kind of like a long dendrite. You can say that, but I'll tell you, please don't write that in the exam, okay, that it's a long dendrite. Please don't write that. Yes, not required. I'm in CBSE board. Yes, yes. For whoever needs extra only, I have written this. If you don't need it, don't worry about it. So now, of course, I hope that you've made a note of it, right? This is the, what do you see, the diagram that is there, but I've already drawn it. You can go back and check it out. And you can write down that neurons are the basic units of the nervous system, extra. And we know that the fundamental, the main function of the nerve cell is to transmit messages in the form of impulses. Cell body is also known as cyton or soma, okay? For whoever was asking me, I'm so sorry. Arif, why are you saying sorry? Please, please don't say that. Yes. Oh, thank you, Harsimran. All right, let's focus on the class, okay? All right, so I'll answer this. Parvez, can I answer this after I finish this question, please? Yes? For I'll take doubts after I finish this question, okay? What, write short notes on the following, right? So we need to write short notes on cytoplasm. Now, if they ask you about cytoplasm, no, you have to, and if they say short notes, these kind of questions will come for two marks or sometimes three marks, all right? Which means you should write two points or maybe three points. So very quickly, cytoplasm is what? Can you tell me? Very good, very good. Yes, cytoplasm is a jelly-like fluid. Yes, very good, Gungun. Very good, Vaishnavi. Yes, yeah, so it's a jelly-like substance that holds the cell organelles, okay? It's a fluid material, very good, very good. So it's very simple. So when you're writing about cytoplasm, I'm going to write the keywords on screen. This needs to be there in your answer, okay? So cytoplasm is a jelly-like viscous fluid. Viscous means it's like a fluid, like a jelly, right? It's the nature of it. It's a viscous fluid which is present where, that is also something you'll have to write. So it is present between the cell membrane, right, and the nuclear membrane. So the location is also important. So now you've told what is cytoplasm and where you find it, right? Now what is the role? Cyto we see that cell organelles that are there, the tiny, tiny organelles that are there are found suspended in the cytoplasm 
and apart from that we also see that various chemical reactions take place inside the cytoplasm so it is important that you write all of these points everything that i am writing on screen is important that you write it now i've got an interesting question on what is protoplasm and how is protoplasm different from cytoplasm see protoplasm includes all the living components of the cell which means your nuclear cytoplasm everything all the living components while cytoplasm is only your jelly like fluid okay so i hope that you've understood this all right what is metabolism metabolism is the total amount of chemical reactions right because in our body so many chemical reactions are taking place so all the chemical reactions are what we call as the metabolic reactions ma'am the celia flagella question well, that was there in olympiad session with can you explain that at last can you remind me what the question is because i have not seen that question if you tell me what it is i'll explain it to you okay very good prachi very good what is histone histone is inside the dna we don't need to go there yes padma ja let's focus on the class right yes very good this question came for exam very good do we find cilia or flagella in amoeba we don't find both in amoeba rather we find pseudopodia in amoeba okay very good okay riddhi is in class 8 very good okay so now this is how you can write the answer on screen start with where we find or what is cytoplasm it is nothing but a jelly like substance which is present between cell membrane and nuclear membrane and here we see that cell organelles here i have given some examples mitochondria ribosomes golgi bodies they are found suspended all right and we see that various chemical reactions takes place here yes all right so animal cells can be called as protoplasm because it has no dead components so that's actually interesting but see we will never say uh, what do you see we never really say that it's only protoplasm right so most often in animal cells we say that it's the total living content but here and there when you think about it no if there are it's not at any point that you'll not find non -liv like only living structures if a cell organelle dies in the meanwhile when the lysosome is coming and eating it it's a dead component that is there no so it's important that you do it yes okay Har Simran, just remind me in the end, okay, of the question. You, if you specify the question, I'll be able to help you. Or give me some context. What is mounting? Mounting is in maybe slide preparation. All right. So when you make slides, no, like for example, when you want to keep it under the microscope, you put it under or you mount your sample. That's what we call it. Yes. Okay, everybody. Now we're moving on to the next question. All right. Now this is again a very important and very commonly asked question. write short notes on nucleus of cell how many of you have got this question in your exam because i'm pretty sure that this is a question that you will all get how many of you have got it yes all right no no i am not ignoring anybody please don't say that i sometimes tend to miss some of the chat that is all yes you have not got but i have a doubt okay very good very good yes see in this case no if you think about it it's a very commonly asked question right some of you would have got it some of you have not got it yes so this is a very important question and in eighth especially they ask you about the structure right so in this case when you think about it right we know yes very good i can see that nuclei i can see some of you telling me nucleus acts as the control center of the cell very good it is the control center now when you're writing a short note you also need to write about the structure so we know that nucleus is protected by a nuclear membrane we know that it has a darkened structure known as nucleolus and the role of nucleolus is the fact that it plays a key role in protein synthesis okay so it's important to understand that now we know that nucleus also has a flu jelly like substance which is there on the inside which we call as nucleoplasm and inside the nucleus we find our genetic material right so we find the genetic material which is nothing but dna or what we find that is the chromosomes so we see that the main function of the nucleus of course is to make sure that it controls and regulates all the functions right and we know that these chromosomes have genes which acts as the unit of heredity that is passed on from parent to offspring very good very very good yes nuclear web manju can you tell me a little bit on where you heard this term yes very good prachi very good 
Ribosomes also help in protein synthesis. Ribosomes is what is responsible for protein synthesis. Remember that. Ribosomes are what will generate proteins. How to draw structure of cell? We have a question coming. I'll draw it. Okay, just wait for some more time. I think it's coming next. I'll draw it very quickly. Yes, everybody. Yes. All right. Please ask me your doubts that are there. I'm going to take a minute. But please let it be with respect to this. Oh, this must be very helpful, right? Robert Brown claimed that the structure was the internal part of the cell. It's called nucleus. Yes. The internal darkened part that is there is what we call as the nucleus. Okay. So he observed that. How to draw bacteriophage? Mansi, I'll try to help you. Why does nuclear membrane have pores in them? Very good. So if you think about it, no, we know that there is genetic material inside which has all the information, the genetic information, right? Now this information, what do you say, is like a library. And I'm sure, uh, Vaishnav, if you'd have seen the class on protein synthesis, this will become very easy for you. But mainly what happens is that the information from the nucleus needs to be sent to the ribosomes which are outside the nucleus, right? So there are some messengers which move out of the nucleus. So in this case, we see that they, for them to move out of it, we have these pores, right? Yes. All right. Somebody wants me to, Tanay, Tanmay wants me to explain gene. All right. See, genes are nothing but, so when you, I'm just erasing all of this. So if you think about it, we know that our genetic material is nothing but DNA, that is deoxyribonucleic acid, right? Now, in this case, when you think about it, we see that this DNA has all the genetic information, right? That is there for us. And in this case, if you think about it, no, we see that there are certain segments of the DNA, right? We call these segments as gene. So in case, if you think about it, I have black hair color. Now, this color of my hair is stored in the genes, right? That means it's present somewhere. This information is present in my body. And that information is there in these genes, okay? So genes are segments of DNA that code for a particular character. Yes, very good. Chromosomes carry heredity material. Okay, genes carry the heredity material which are present in chromosomes, all right? Full form of DNA, that is deoxyribonucleic acid, all right? Yes, keratin is dead cells. No, keratin is a protein, all right? And when they, when it is present, we see that cells get keratinized, right? And we call those cells, they are most likely dead cells. We find them on the surface of our skin. Yes, my name is Aishwarya Gurvinder. I think you are new. For those of you who are asking full form of DNA, I have written it on the screen. Please take a screenshot, okay? Yes. So when you're writing your answer, four points. Start off with how nucleus is the control center, how it has nuclear membrane. Inner part is filled with nucleoplasm. It consists of nucleolus as well. And it has chromosomes or the genetic material, right? And we know that it commands all the functions that happens inside the cells and has genetic material known as DNA, okay? So for those of you who are still a little confused, I would request that you rewind a little because we have quite a few questions to cover. That's why. So I'm a little, I'm running a little short on time because you know, Kushbu ma'am and Kriti ma'am have a class with all of you, no? So we want to wind up very quickly. All right, everybody, are we clear? Give me a good to go on the chat. Yes, all right. Very good, everybody. It, I understand, Payal, that happens, right? Sometimes it happens to us. But it's okay, I'll help you. Uh, the more and more you practice, no, the more it becomes easy. Yes, Sonia, yes, yes, I am seeing all your chats. Okay. All right, clear. Let's get going to the next question. All right. So the next question is, which part of the cell contains cell organelles? One more question in the chat. Very quickly. Yes, which part? This is very simple now. Which part of the cell contains cell organelles? Yes, hello, good evening, Ankita, good evening. Yes, I want this chat to be flooding with the answers, okay? Very good, very good. It is cytoplasm. Wonderful, students, wonderful. Not chloroplast, right? It is cytoplasm. I know, I told the answer long ago. But see, questions are very repetitive like that, no? 
So we know cytoplasm is the viscous fluid like structure present between cell membrane and nuclear membrane where all the cell organelles are found suspended. Now some of you had a doubt on lysosomes. Who had a doubt on lysosomes? Somebody asked me. I remember seeing that question. Anybody who has a doubt on lysosomes, give me a quick hands up so that I know or I can just skip this part. Oh, thank you. Cell wall, okay. You have a doubt on cell wall, is it, my mightily? Yes, all right. Okay, I can see some of you did have a doubt on lysosomes. Yes, I remember seeing this. Very good. So, so lysosomes that are there, no? Lysosomes are a type of cell organelle that we find in the cell. Think of lysosomes as your garbage man, okay? But garbage man with power. That's the only difference, right? So in the case of lysosomes, what happens is that if there is any maybe uh, dysfunctional cell organelle, right? So for example, some one or two ribosomes are not working properly, right? Or maybe there is some unwanted material that has entered, right? You know that sometimes there can be some viruses which may enter. Okay, let's not go into viruses. Let's assume some unwanted particle has entered, okay? Now imagine if all of this enters, somebody has to throw it out, no? Somebody's job is to see, are you part of my cell or are you not part of my cell? So lysosome is responsible for getting rid of anything unwanted, right? So they get rid of it. Yes, they are also known as suicide bags of the cells because they will do it. And at one point, if the full cell is only not working, no? The lysosome has the ability to get rid of the cell. It will kill the cell in itself, right? Yes, so that's why we call it as suicide bags, yes? Are lysosomes dangerous? No, they are not dangerous for the cell. But rather lysosomes are important because they will be the ones detecting, right? Is the cell actually working properly? Is the cell beyond repair that if it's there in the body, it's going to cause harm? That is when lysosome will take a call, okay? Hello, Vanshika. Hello. Yes. All right. I saw Harsimran, you had asked me a question, ma'am, which is the important part? See, you cannot really say that only one part of the cell is important. Every part of the cell is important. You think about it. If I remove one part of it, do you think it will be able to survive? It will not be. That's why they are all so integrated. We all require everything, right? It's important that you understand that. Yes? What is plastid? Manju, I'm just going to explain that the question based on plastid. I'll explain it then. Function of cytoplasm, jelly-like fluid, which is present, right? It's like a jelly-like fluid, which is found between cell membrane and nuclear membrane. All of this that I'm scribbling on is your cytoplasm, right? And here we see that there's a lot of chemical reactions that takes place here. Yes, everything has its own value. Very good. In egg, where are the cell organelles? See, when res with respect to egg, no, I'm not going to go there because in eggs, the development and everything is quite different because there it is serving as a reproductive cell, okay? So here, that is a reproductive cell which is altogether different. So I will tell you this maybe when I do reproduction chapter, all right? Aisha, you are not a new student, I know that. So for everybody out there, this is the answer. This is a very simple answer. So we're going to go quickly to the next one. Ha, ah, this is the most demanded question for today. Make sketches of animal cell and plant cell and state three differences between them. Yes. How many of you want this? I know a lot of you are asking me for this. Yes, everybody. This sketch, <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> That's why when I change the slide, you will see there is nothing. It is blank slide. Yes, new students, hello, hello, welcome to the class. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, yes? Okay, I, uh, Mansi, I will do this question. Just give me five minutes, I'll make the sketch. So, will you promise me one thing? Will you all make sure that as I draw in class, you will also draw with me? Will you promise me that? Yes, then I will go ahead, okay? Because as you draw with me and you listen to my instructions, maybe it may not look as you think it will be, but slowly, this is how you start practicing, okay? Very good. Okay, thank you, Vikas. <laughs> okay, very good, everyone. Very good. Yes, okay. So first, I'm going to make plant cell on, I'm going to make animal cell, and then I'm going to make plant cell, okay? So first up with animal cell, what you need to do is, you need to make a rough structure, all right? So first, we will make an outline. Now, when you are drawing it in your pen and paper, no, what I'd also suggest is because sometimes when we draw oval and all, no, it'll look very, it'll not look nice, right? So what you can do is you can make a rough dotted line like this also so that you can draw a neat circle like this. I'll 
not say circle but oval oval is what i would be going for okay all right so i'm going to use some lighter color so firstly we are going to make a rough oval like this all right then next what we are going to do is we will draw the nucleus all right so in the case of nucleus you know nucleus has pores no so you can't draw a full circle and keep like this be true to yourself draw the pores also so in my case because i don't have pencil and eraser i'll have to struggle a little but you can draw it something like this so normally what i do is i draw a circle and then i'll erase some of the parts like this so that it gets easy for you you don't need to draw like this no so you can do something like this so let me adjust this part and here we see that it is double membrane so you can make this part really thick okay so make this thick all right so we've done this all right now inside you'll have to draw a nucleolus because we just discussed that then you have to draw all the genetic material so you know that even in your textbook it will look something like this so you can make you know some rough structures here so nucleus is done are are you able to see in yellow yellow is fine no because white i don't want to use because sometimes it's not okay i can also use white i'll use white for the next one yes is it okay because uh, i've already started drawing this there's no cell wall this is only cell membrane okay this is clear no all right now next you have to draw the endoplasmic reticulum all right some of you are asking me ma'am what that is so i'll be telling you now see endoplasmic reticulum is a structure of flattened structures okay they are flattened tubular structures they will look something like this and we see that there are two kinds of it all right so you have rough endoplasmic reticulum now this rough endoplasmic reticulum is called as rough endoplasmic reticulum because it has ribosomes on their surface and we know that ribosomes are responsible for protein synthesis so you can draw small dots which represent ribosomes all right now on the other side you can draw your smooth endoplasmic so all i was so far i was telling you about rough endoplasmic reticulum now you can go back and draw smooth which does not have any ribosomes in it okay so now you have drawn many parts now next up what you need to do is you have to draw another few more cell organelles okay yes golgi bodies are also there so they are also flattened structures let me use maybe blue color so we'll draw golgi bodies which are there so it will be looking something like this so you can have these flattened structures and some vesicles you can draw in this manner then our very own famous mitochondria so you can draw some mitochondria on the side so if you remember how the cell organelles will look like drawing becomes very very easy right so inside of the mitochondria you can have structures like this so in your drawing mitochondria i'm going to show you do it like this okay draw it in this manner yes all right now next up what we are going to do is maybe i'll go back to using bright yellow we need to draw lysosomes right so this will be a lysosomes we can draw one or two lysosomes now we know that when we talk about animal cell no we know that there is no what do you say cell wall right there is no plastids right which means there's no chloroplast or anything like that vacuoles which are there they might be very small so if i'm drawing a vacuole no so let's say i'm going to use i'll go to use red color so the vacuole if you draw also will be very small or it might even be absent yes so this right here is a very simple image of the cell right and i know this is the most demand question this is still incomplete because i have not done two things i have not labeled it so you have to write animal cell then label the parts so here you have cell membrane then here you can label your mitochondria okay then you have to label cytoplasm right so for cytoplasm what you can also do is you can put some dots like this okay you can put some dots or you can lightly shade it with your pencil yes what is it that i've drawn in blue color this right here is the golgi bodies i'm labeling it one by one right so this right here is my rough 
endoplasmic reticulum. I will move, don't worry, I know this is coming behind me. So I'm going to start labeling it on the other side, okay? Now this right here that I've drawn in yellow was the lysosomes that are there, right? Then here I have my smooth endoplasmic reticulum. So I'm just going to write smooth ER because I don't want to take too much place. Then here of course I have nucleus, this part right here. That is the nucleus. Now this is not how you should label but I'm losing, the, I don't have enough place, okay? That's why I'm labeling it like this. Then you know that this right here is the chromatin. So focus on labeling the chromosomes or the chromatin material, right? And if you want, you can label the vacuoles that are there. Yes, there are many more. I have I have labeled lysosome. I have not drawn centrioles. That's all. Centrioles are not there in eighth grade, so I have just done it. Okay, I have left that out. You can take a quick screenshot, everybody. I'll move out, and you can take a quick screenshot. Yes, centrosome, centrioles, I will tell you it is okay. Like, if you don't draw also. Like, if they ask you to draw, I will tell you you can draw. I will draw it for you. Not like I don't, but in school if they ask you. So, in NCRT, they don't recommend, right? So, that is why I normally don't. So, centrioles will look something like this. So, you can draw like a circle and two things. It will be your centrosomes. Yes? I'll come, Vaishnavi. I'll come soon. I'll be coming soon. Centrosomes and centrioles, okay, that we can do. Yes, yes, all right, everybody, this is clear. We know how to draw animal cell. Yes, give me a quick thumbs up. I'll send you the PDF, don't worry, don't worry. Chromatin, ha, huh? so we, all, we call it as chromatin material or you can say chromosomes also, I'm sorry. Chromosomes, sorry. Very good, everybody, very good. All clear. Now we will go on to doing plant cell, okay? So now plant cell, when you draw, no, I'll always recommend you give a polygonal structure. So I'm going to draw it in green, right? So what I normally recommend is you can draw it a little bit rectangular, okay? Because you know that if my 7th graders are here, no? In this case, when you think about it, for 7th graders, we know that there are some mesophyll cells which look a little bit like this, yes? So, I'm going to make a bigger cell now so that I have place to draw because I feel like there are a lot of parts that I have to do. So, you can make a big cell. Okay. Again, you can use a scale to make it straight. Right. Now, here you will have to draw some additional structure because you know plant cells have cell wall. Right. So, let me just quickly draw this. Oops. Yes, very good everybody, are we able to follow? So this right here is a plant cell. Alright, and this what I am drawing is the cell wall. Now, it's more or less the same thing, right? Like, it's more or less the same thing. You again need to draw your cytoplasm, the cell membrane on the inside. Now, normally with plant cells, no, we also know that they have a very big vacuole also. So we see that the nucleus is more or less towards the side. So again, we will do this. So whenever you're drawing the nucleus, you can have pores. All right, draw the nucleoplas, the nucleolus. Yes, put the chroma, the genetic material that is there inside. Right, and I'm going to do only once. I'm going to do ER very fast, okay? Because it's taking some time now. So I'm going to draw ER in this direction. Huh. So see, I'm making very simplified ERs now. And again, quickly, let's put our, you know, rough ER, smooth ER, all of it on it. Okay, so one side I'm drawing rough ER. All right. Now in plant cell, there are some additional structure. For example, we see that they have a very big vacuole, right? So I'm going to draw a very big vacuole. Now apart from that, we also know that it has chloroplast, right? So you can draw these ovoid structures there, which are known as chloroplast. Yes, and when you're drawing the chloroplast, I'll show you how you can draw it. 
So the chloroplast structure would look something like this. So do a double membrane like this. Draw small discs. Connect. Draw small discs. Okay. So this is how it look on the inside. Don't worry. Okay. What is the yellow color thing inside the nucleus? Nucleolus. So it has chloroplast. No. Can you quickly tell me the function of chloroplast? Because I feel like as I'm drawing all of you are, you know, maybe dozing off. I'm like, ah, let ma'am draw. She's talking and drawing. <laughs> Quickly tell me the function of chloroplast. Very good. It has chlorophyll. Yes. See, now my mitochondria is looking very off. Yes, very good. It consists of chlorophyll, which imparts green color to the cell. Wonderful, wonderful. Yes. Now, of course, if you want, you can draw some small structures like this. But in the case of plants, I'll see main things you have to draw, okay? And lastly, I'm going to put some dots. Yes, all right. So this right here is what a plant cell would roughly look like. Yes, Karthik, please tell me what is your doubt. Very good, very good, everyone. Very good, yes. There are a lot of structures. See, again, like I told you for the question, you need to make sketches of plant and animal cell and state three differences between them. That's the main thing. So you don't need to go too much in detail also. So this right here is a plant cell that is there. Where is Golgi complex? I have not drawn it, but you can draw the Golgi complex. It, again, same thing. You can draw like this. And we'll not call it Golgi complex per se. Yes. What is nucleus? Control center of the cell, right? Yes, this is plant cell. What is the function? See, endoplasmic reticulum provides structure, right? And we also see that smooth endoplasmic reticulum plays a key role in producing lipids that are there. And the rough endoplasmic reticulum, because they have, you know, the ribosomes, they help in protein synthesis. So very quickly, I'm going to label because see, we're running out of time. I told you 30 minutes, it's 46 and I have to wind up before Kushbu ma'am and Kriti ma'am's class start, no? So here, as you can see, we have cell wall. Yes, cell membrane. So cell wall here is an additional structure, right? Then here, of course, we have the cytoplasm and we see that there is a large vacuole, right? So this is also something we didn't find in animal cells. And here, of course, we have chloroplasts or plastids that are there. Yes, so I'm going to, oh, I wrote plastids. So it's chloroplast. All right. And we know that this is something which we don't find in animal cells. Then here you can label the nucleus, right? And then, of course, you can label the mitochondria as well. I'm just going to make a quick label. You can label mitochondria. All right. So this is what will be there. This question can easily come for five marks. You'll get four marks, I mean, you'll get two marks for the drawing and you'll get three marks for writing or two and a half, two and a half that you will get. Yes? All right. So height of the tower and everything, you can ask Kushbu ma'am. Okay? Yes. So this right here is the main difference between plant cell and animal cell. Are we clear? I have already told this, rough ER apart from synthesizing. See, apart from ribosomes are responsible for protein synthesis. ER will also provide support, okay? Yes, all right, okay. Now let's move on, everybody. We have quite a few questions to go and they're very important ones, okay? So we're going to be a little fast. So here we have to state the differences between prokaryotes and eukaryotes, right? So very quickly, everybody, tell me in the chat. What are prokaryotes and eukaryotes? Now, prokaryotes that are there are nothing but cells or organisms which have prokaryotic cell, right? And we know that they have no true nucleus or they are underdeveloped, right? So they don't have any proper nucleus, yes? Eukaryotes do not have nucleoid. Prokaryotes have a nucleoid region where the genetic material is found concentrated. So here we see that they lack a nuclear membrane, okay? Now we know that bacteria is the most common example that is there. While on the other hand, if you see eukaryotic cells, we see that they have a proper nucleus or we see that they have a well-defined nucleus. Yes, and we see that it is protected or it is in, or the genetic material that is there is enclosed by a nuclear membrane. 
right? So genetic material is found enclosed. Yes, and we know that all animal cells and plant cells are most common examples. All right. Eukaryotic are multicellular, not always. Fungi is a, we know that yeast is a eukaryotic cell which is unicellular. So not always is it eukaryotic. All right? I mean, not all single-celled organisms are prokaryotic. Some of them can be eukaryotic also. Your amoeba is eukaryotic, right? Yes, all right. What is the function of nuclear membrane? It is responsible for enclosing the genetic material. Are we clear, everybody? Are we clear with the differences of eukaryotic and prokaryotic? Yes, very quickly. All right. Yes, eukaryotic cells, I'm going to repeat once again. Eukaryotic cells are those cells which have a well-defined nucleus. And we know that the genetic material is enclosed by a nuclear membrane. Okay. So if the genetic material is there, there's a nuclear membrane which is enclosing it. All right. And we know that because it has a proper nuclear structure, we see that because it has a proper nucleus, we call it as a eukaryotic cell or true nucleus. While on the other hand, if you see in the case of prokaryotic cells, we see that the genetic material is, there's no nucleus. The genetic material is found concentrated on one place, which is called as nucleoid region. Okay. So in this case, if you see, this is how you should write the differences. Draw a tabular column, right, and do the differences. And yes, another very important thing is prokaryotes have no membrane bound cell organelles while eukaryotes have membrane bound cell organelles okay yes very good you means true carrion means nucleus now let's move on to the next one very simple and easy question where are the chromosomes found in a cell and state their function okay i know i said 30 minutes and i've gone to 50 minutes but i'm going to quickly go okay where are chromosomes found in a cell? Quickly in the chat and state their function. Yes? Very good. So chromosomes are found in the nucleus. And what is their function, everybody? What does chromosomes have? Chromosomes have genes in them. They are units of heredity, right? We have already discussed this. Yes? Chromosomes carry genes or genes are present in them. Very good, very good, yes. So in this case, it's very simple. So we know that they, uh, there are thread-like structures known as chromosomes, which consist of genes that act as heredity material or heredity material is nothing but those material or the genetic material that is transferred from parent to offspring. All right? Yes, very good. Wonderful, everybody, wonderful. Now moving on when you are writing the answer, I have given you some extra pointers, okay? Chromosomes are found in the nucleus of a cell or you can specify eukaryotic cell if you want to. Now functions of course is to carry genetic material, it consists of genes, they are you know units of inheritance which are transferred from parent to offspring. But apart from that they also regulate various activities that happen within the cell. So you have to mention both, okay? This is only of two marks. It depends. Yeah, it's only for two marks, but I've given you some extra pointers just in case if you need it, right? What is chromatin? See, chromosome, chromatin, they're nothing but structures or the kind, the genetic material that you find inside the nucleus. See, I'm not going into details because later on it might be a little beyond, but you learn about it in your next grade, ninth grade, all right? Very good, everybody. Very good. Yes, chromosomes play a key role in inheritance. Very good. Like I said, no, it comes between two to four marks at some times. You want to take screenshot? Please take a screenshot or else I'll be sending it to you on Telegram also. Don't worry. I'll send it. Today only you will be getting it, okay? Yes, all right. Harsimran, in case if I'm not able to, which is most likely what might happen, since I'm not going to be able to answer it during the live, you can post, as a, post it as a doubt in the comment section so that I'll reply to you, okay? All right. Now, next one is a little, it's going to be a tricky question, yes? Okay. So now cells are the basic structural units of living organisms. Explain. Okay, everyone. Okay, so I'm going to quickly go through this, right? 
So when you talk about cells, right, we know that cells are the basic structural units, which means that all living organisms, they get their structure because they are made up of cells, right? So that is what you need to write. So cells are the basic structural units because they make up the structure. And each and every cell have the ability to carry out the individual function, which is why we say that cells are the basic structural and functional units of life. Yes, that is the answer that you need to write. All living organisms are made up of cells and the cells contribute to their structure. Yes, and of course they carry out the functions that are responsible for their existence. Yes, this is the answer to it. It's very simple and easy. Provides the structure, carries out the function of the living organism. Hence, it is known as the basic unit of life. Now, moving on to the next one. Explain why chloroplasts are found only in plant cells. Okay. Now, we know that chloroplasts are nothing but plastids, which are cell organelles that are exclusively found in plants. Now, plastids are nothing but cell organelles which consists of certain pigments in them, all right? And here we see that chloroplast consists of a green pigment known as chlorophyll, which plays a key role in the process of photosynthesis. And they're able to do photosynthesis because of the chloroplast, right? Which is why we see here that chloroplasts are found in plant cells exclusively because they are, you know, they're responsible for synthesizing food, yes? Very good, everybody. Very good. Now I'm going to move on to the last question. See, this is a crossword question that is there. And I, you know me, I love solving crosswords with all of you. Okay. But because we're short of time and Ankita Mam is here for her class. She's sitting right here. Yes, so Ankita Mam will come in the end also. But because you see that I'm a little short on time, this is the solution for the crossword. Yes. Because it's very simple, it's easy, but due to shortage of time, I'm not able to do it. In case if any of you have doubts in the crossword, let me know in the comment section. I will definitely help you out. But there's a very easy crossword on what is necessary for photosynthesis, component present in cytoplasm, right? It's very simple and easy. Yes? All right, everybody. So with this, of course, I will sign off. But of course, before I go ahead, right, do not forget to register for the Parents Club that is happening. See, Parent Club is a webinar that is going to take place on 5th of October. It's going to be a holiday and you just need to spend some time with us. All right. Now here, of course, we are going to be tackling some of the problems that I'm sure you face and I'm sure your parents must also be thinking about, right? For example, how you have online classes and you have to go to school, so many things that you have to manage, right? So it's very important that you attend this to understand. And it's not just for you, it's for your parents also. So please tell your parents to register, okay? It's happening on 5th of October. Chetna ma'am is going to be coming. Ankita ma'am will also be there, right? And of course, Chetna ma'am is going to be talking about a lot of important things, right? So please make sure that you register. And I'm going to be sharing this on Telegram. For those of you who are not part of Telegram, please make sure that you get yourself registered. Link is again there in the description box. Yes, all right, everybody. Meaning of plastids, I have already explained. You can just go back and check it out. I'm running short of time, everybody. And I hope that this session helped you. If you still have doubts, post it in the comment section below. I will come and answer, not from Baiju's channel. I will be answering it, so do not worry. And of course, do not forget to hit that like button, share it with your friends, and stay subscribed to our channel. Yes. All right, everybody. I hope you found this helpful. Please do let me know. Hoping to see you very soon again. Bye-bye and have a nice day.